Um, what we're talking about tonight, let me get a sip of water before I get going. I'm a very soft-spoken person, naturally, and so not having a microphone tonight is where I'm kind of experimenting with this. Um, and, and one of my biggest problems is I talk too much. And, and throughout the day, I notice i got to guard my voice because I'm soft-spoken, and the more I talk, the more I lose my voice. So anyway, bear with me. Um, we're talking about tonight, we're talking about uh, sacraments. And so what I'm going to talk about is Mass and Communion, kind of in one, and I'm going to talk about Confession as well. And keep in mind, like, eight years ago when I got to this church, I didn't believe in any of it. Matter of fact, I believed, I was going to, I was hanging out with this guy who was taking me through a Bible, and, and a Bible study, and he was going to a non-Catholic church. But it wasn't just your average non-Catholic church. Um, Anyway, the, where he went, their, their pastor was very charismatic, anointed, a gifted speaker. It was a great church. They, they did discipleship, men on men. And so, like, they went to uh, service in the morning on Sunday. They come back Sunday night. They were teaching these guys how to live the gospel and how to teach it, you know, how to share it. And so I admired that. The only problem with this church was the guy that was leading it was a little bit anti-Catholic. And that's kind of an understatement. You know, everything, every time I went there, I, you, you, it, just, it just came out of them. So all his disciples, it came out of them. And so what they did is they taught me all the anti-Catholic stuff. Um, and I brought it over here to the center, and not a whole lot of people in the Catholic Church know their faith. And so it was like easy picking. You know, you just start throwing this stuff at most Catholics, and they're like, oh, you know. Um, anyway, I was reading the Bible every day which most Catholics don't. And so uh, I had a bad attitude what they were giving me, their bad attitude. It was a bad attitude, basically. I got that from them, plus I had, have you ever heard a little bit of knowledge is dangerous? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I'm reading the Bible every day and you're not, so what are you gonna teach me? I'm, I'm telling you, it was, I had, it was, it was a bad combination. Um, and, and, you know, they're teaching their, you know, thought is if mass is a man-made, you know, thing. Not, it's not from God, it's man-made. So I had all that in my head. You know, you've heard people say, I don't need religion. I just need Jesus. We've all heard it. Some of us have probably said it before. I know I have. It sounds cool to say it. You know, unfortunately, you know, most of the guys I know that live that mentality, it, it just gets you a little bit off base if you're not under any kind of church authority. So in the meantime, um, Oh, the guy, with the, the guy with the bad attitude, I'm doing penance now. Because every once in a while I get to meet one of these guys that I, was like me when I first got here. I'm dealing with one now. I'm telling you, I'm like, Lord, have mercy on my soul. You know? <laughs> know, know everything, you know, anyway. Um, but over the years, I've fallen in love with the Mass. I've fallen in love with the Mass. I go to Mass every day of my life. Um, anyway, where was I? Oh. Obligation. What is it called? The whole, what do we call it? The Sunday? I wish they would take that word and put a jackhammer on that word and get rid of it. Because it almost it almost sounds religious. The reason I come to Mass is because I want to live. Amen? I get life out of Mass. I can't even imagine. I can't imagine being somewhere besides here on Sunday morning. The thought never crosses my mind. Eight years running, I promise you. The thought never crosses my mind of not coming here. It's ingrained in me. I receive life here. Every once in a while, I wind up at a different Catholic church, and I kind of know better now. I'm not dogging any other Catholic church. I go to little quiet churches, you know, the other six days of the week. I'm perfectly fine. I've learned a lot in them, but on Sunday, I need to be here. And every once in a while, I wind up where I'm not here, and it's my own fault because I know, I know what I need to get here on Sunday. Uh, the quiet mass at the other churches, I love them. I just I cherish them. Like the co-cathedral, I go there a few days a week. And uh, I love going there during the week. However, I've been there a few times on a Sunday, and I don't like being there on Sunday. Because they, they have a cantor, you know, you can't sing, you can't really praise the Lord. You can't, you know what I mean? Because no one else is. And so, you're, you know, anyway, maybe I need to grow up in that, I don't know. But anyway, um, I fall in love with the Mass. Mass at the center. How many of y'all come to the center? How many of y'all are coming to the center? And Mass starts at 10.30, right? So what time do we need to be here? 10 o'clock. Listen, if I...
get here at 1030, I'm not late. If I get here at 1030, I'm very late. You know, if you, like, when you were, a, uh, we got kind of an older crowd here, Jonathan and Drew, when y'all, you know, when y'all first met, you were going on a date, <laughs> you know, like if I found a dream date that I was going to go out with, and I was going to pick her up at 730, I wouldn't be at Kroger trying to buy flowers at, at 7.15. I wouldn't be in the dry cleaning store trying to get a closet match for, you know, a few hours before. I wouldn't be able to be prepared. And, I, and it, you know, in a sense, if we really believe that we're going to have an encounter with Christ in the Mass, I mean, if we really believe that, if we really believe in the real presence, you know, it's one thing to profess it. We profess it. There's a creed. We all say it together. But if I really believe that, I believe my actions are going to say that. And, uh, you know, I mentioned in my prayer, my talks on prayer, my bedtime kind of centered around my morning prayer. It's the same with the Sunday Mass. What I do on su Saturday night is tied to what I'm going to do on Sunday morning. You know, I don't, I don't just wake up disheveled, you know what I mean? I know what time I'm going to bed. I get life in the Sunday Mass. So once again, uh, you know, from time to time, I'd say about, I can count on one hand, the time, less than five times a year, I get here at 10.30. It happens. It does happen. It is a completely and totally different experience when I do. Because I need to quiet my heart. I, I usually get here between 10 and 10.10. 10. Sometimes I get here at 9.30. Always a better experience. Because then I can get all my chit-chatting out of the way. You know, if I get here at 10.15, I, I come in the back door. Because I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Because I need to be in that sanctuary at 10.15. I need to be in that sanctuary no later than 10:15, because I gotta quiet my heart. I'm about to receive the Lord. I wanna, and, and this is in your little handout. This prayer, and I learned this prayer by going to a Latin mass. I go to a Latin mass a couple times a week. It's by my house. It starts at 6:30, and it just really makes my day go a lot smoother. It doesn't happen in the middle of the day. But they have all these prayers, since I can't understand one word that's being spoken, I got a little book I go through. And that's really taught me a lot more about the Mass, too. But this is a, it's called the Prayer of St. Thomas Aquinas. It's called his Before Communion Prayer. And I'm going to read it. it. It says, Almighty and eternal God, behold, I come to the sacrament of your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when I pray this, I probably won't use all those words. I just say, Father God, Almighty. I'm here to receive Jesus. You know, I try not to say it with those words, kind of throw me off a little bit. But basically, it's a, I'm sick. I'm coming to the physician of life. You know, I'm unclean. I'm coming to the fountain of mercy. I'm blind. I need eternal, I need your life. And so, by saying this prayer, um, it says, Therefore, I beg of your infinite goodness, of your goodness, heal my sickness, wash away my filth, enlighten my blindness, clothe my nakedness. This prayer is powerful. He says, in order that I'm going to receive the bread of angels today. Lord, make me worthy. Make me worthy to receive this. And if I get to a mass and it happens from time to time and I don't have time to at least say this prayer, once again, I'm just telling you, it's a completely different experience. I need to be in mass uh, prior to, you know, at least 10 minutes before we get going. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, it says, Ask and you shall receive. And I'm preparing myself before Mass. Um, you know, there's a, the, one of the gospel readings in Matthew 9, 21. It's about the woman who says, you know, if I can just touch your cloak, I'll, I'll, I'll be healed. If I can just touch your cloak. You know, and I believe in the gospels, and I believe God honors our prayers. I will pray that to him. I'll say, look, here I am. I'm, I'm coming to touch your cloak today. I believe that my life will never, ever be the same when I leave this Mass here today. I, I believe that I'm going to be touched, that I'm going to be healed. Uh, Matthew 12, 15, it says, many people followed Jesus, and he healed them all. And I'll speak this out to Jesus. I'll say, here I am. I'm in that group. I want to be healed today. I'm not coming here to go through the motions. I'm not coming to put on a holy face. I expect to receive your healing today. Therefore, Therefore, if Mass starts at 10.30, I like to be here by 10 o'clock, between 10 and 10.10. And some of you guys, you might need to be here at 8.30. Frank, you need to be here at 8.30. Extra early. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, 
Anyway, another thing that I do.